Hello friends, in this video we are going to see an amazing feature in ASP.NET MVC Razor that is model binding. ASP.NET MVC model binding allows you to map HTTP request data with a model. The MVC runtime uses default model binder named workhorse to build the parameters. Model binding implicitly goes to work when you have an action parameter. Model binding can be explicitly invoked using update model and update try update model methods. The byproduct of model binding is model state. Now let's see through the application how the model binding works. Now we have a simple ASP.NET MVC3 application wherein I have a home controller having index action result method. Now I have a corresponding index.cshtml view. Now first let's go through our view model. I have created a simple class that is employee view model. This view model has three properties that is name, designation, and city. Right now, we don't require any annotations on the properties. And this model, view, mod, view model, is referred on index.cshtml, which becomes the model of the view. And I have used editor, dot, editor for model helper to render the controls for the properties present in the employee model. And I have also enclosed these properties or controls inside a form and I have created a submit button. Now when user post this form the request will be sent to this index with SADP post attribute. So let's run the application and see how the form is posted. So this is my index view. I have three properties and a submit button. Now in ASP.NET MVC, we usually use form collection to get the values of the form. And in traditional ASP.NET, we use request.form to get the values from the form. So let's see how we can get the values. So let's, I've added first name as Ses Fabregas, sorry, name as Ses Fabregas, designation as player and city as Barcelona. And I submit the form. So the debugger hits. And if I see both name and name one and name two variables will have the same values that is name but fetched using the two two different ways so this ways this both the ways looks quite cool and simple but becomes tedious as number of properties grow now suppose you have 20 properties on a form so you need to write 20 lines to get the value of each property so the model binding comes to the picture to rescue this situation so instead of accepting the object of form collection class, I can accept an object of my view model itself. So as you know, the index.cshtml, I have referred employee view model and the form will have the properties of this model itself. I can accept the object of employee view model as a parameter to this post method. So let's run the application again and check how it works. So I'm going to supply the same values again and I submit the form. You can see this employee object is populated with the values entered by me on the form. So how it worked? So what happens when the MVC runtime inspects that the post method has a parameter, it implicitly calls model binding or invokes model binding. And in model binding, that is the default model binder, what it does, it checks all the properties inside the class that is employee view model and finds it in the request. When it finds in the request, it checks its value and it binds the class with that value. So suppose you have three properties, so it will populate all the three properties and it will get the values from the request itself. So the work you do with the request here that is we did earlier that is done by the model binder and it model and the model binder will bind all the properties to this view model so this is how you can use model binding to do tedious task very simply so this is an example of class type model binding so instead of using this class we could have entered the three parameters one by one 
say suppose string name my second parameter was text designation and my third parameter and the third property is city so in this case as well what model binder inspect is that the action method that is a post action method has parameters so it calls the model binding and model binding inspects each parameter and finds it in the request and binds it so when I submit you can see these variables being populated by the model binding so this is how model binding works for class type and simple prim primitive type data types so now let's move to my second action result method that is index 1 and its corresponding post method that is index 1 with HTTP post attribute so, so in the coming demo I'm going to show how the list type model binding can be done so for this let's go to index.1 CSSTML index1.csstml in this view I have referred employee view model which is of type list as a view model and in the view I have iterated over the list of employees and I have created control for each employee and I have a submit button and if I go to the index action method I have created three employees I have added to the list of type employee view model and I have passed to the view so now when the view is rendered you can see or you can have three employees with their controls with this submit button so let's go to home index one you can see three employees with submit button so when I change these values suppose I change first name to sesc and designation of second employee to software engineer and city of third employee to Mumbai and I submit the form you can see the three employees being populated and if you check the first one its name is being updated check in the second one its designation being updated and if you check the third one its name is being updated so this is how model binding also binds a list type variables or list type objects so this is all about implicit model binding now we'll see explicit model binding implicit means that is called by itself and we can also call model binding explicitly using update model and try update model methods so for now I am accepting a dummy string which is of no use so now for explicit model binding I am creating object of type employee view model so for let's take update model first so I say update model and I pass the model object let's run it enter the values if I submit it so try update model will update the values or properties in the view model now as you know the model binding and the model state or the data annotation works hand in hand so what model binding does it inspects now let's take an example of name now suppose you have applied required annotation on this property so when model binder sees or model binder checks name property in the request if it finds it as null or empty and it also checks that the required annotation has been applied to this property it set model state to false for this property and error message or model state error message has been added in the model state for this property so what happens an update model has a special behavior if something wrong goes in the model binding like the model state it gives an exception so now I have added a required annotation so let's see 
uh, what update model does when I don't provide name for the employee. So to check the scenario, I'm not going to supply the name and I'm going to submit the form. So what happens in this case, update model throws an exception. So this is the def this is the behavior of an update model. So there's a way you can use it. So we are going to use it in a try. And in the catch, we are going to return view with model. Now, this model has the model errors which is shown on the view. So let's run it again. I'm going to leave the name property empty this time as well and I'm submitting the form so what happens in this case again exception throws thrown by the update model it has been cached by us and we are going to return the view with model so it shows the name field is required so this is how the explicit model binding works and also model state has been updated hand in hand so there's one more method that is try update model which works for us so if you check try update model similar to update model it accepts the model object now there's one more thing you have noticed it returns a boolean value so if the model state is true it returns a true if model state is false it returns false so in this case what we can do we can put it in if block so we say if try update model is true then we return the view else we return with the view with the errors so let's run the application again I'm going to check the same scenario that is I'm not supplying any name and I'm just going to submit the form so what happens the try update model returns false and error message is shown to the user that is name field is required now suppose I supply the name SS Fabregas and I submit the form try update model returns true and the view is returned so this is how the model binding explicit model binding works with try update model so the only difference between model update model and try update model is that the update model throws an exception when model binding fails but try update model doesn't and try update model returns a boolean value whether the model handling model binding has been successfully done or not so this is all about model binding and let's summarize this uh, ASP and MVC model binding used to map HTTP request that is it maps the HTTP request to the variables the variables that is a parameter so parameter can be of type list can be of type class or simple primitive types the MVC runtime uses default model binder named workhorse to build the parameters model binding implicitly goes to work yes when you have action parameter it the MVC runtime calls the model binding implicitly and we can call the model binding explicitly using update model and try update model methods update model throws an exception when something goes wrong in the model binding and try update model returns a boolean value depending upon the model binding success and the byproduct of model binding is model state as we saw and there's one more thing i forget to tell you we can have we can also create uh, we can also create custom model binders like as if uh, in this example we, sh we have seen that uh, the MVC runtime uses default model binder that is workhorse but we can create our own model binders custom model binders and we can have different model binders for different view models that we will see in our different video that is custom model binders so this is all about model binding thanks for watching